Father, we do thank you today, Lord, for your precious word. Lord, your word is so holy, so precious to us. We hunger every day for revelation of it, light and truth of your word, uh, helping us to see and to operate and to function at the capacity that you would have us to function at. Lord, you told us in your word that you gave us your word that we would be equipped to uh, complete uh, everything you've called us to do. And so we're asking you for more revelation today, more light, more truth. Lord, speak to us the things we need to hear. Reveal to us the things we need to see. And we uh, ask you to give me utterance and anointing to minister this just the way you'd have me to. And Lord, we commit today to not be hearers only of your word, but to be doers of it. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? amen? Say it with me. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Thanks, Scott. That, that helps me. <laughs> Praise God. Colossians chapter 1, and uh, here in verse 21, it says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now, say now, now has God reconciled. Has it happened? It's, it's more exciting, I think, sometimes than we realize. There was something between us and God before we got saved, and it was our sin. And it was not just what we did, it was our condition. And the condition of our spirit kept us from fellowship with the Father like He wanted. That's what was between you and Him, and me and Him before we were saved. It was, it was our sin nature that hindered fellowship with the Father. Could not fellowship with Him with that nature. And uh, we needed to be reconciled. And uh, if you are saved, now you are reconciled, right? Yes. And how did it happen? It happened in the body of Jesus' flesh through death to present you. Present you how? Jesus is the one that presents you before the Father. Right? Yes. To present you before the Father how? Holy. Unblameable and unreprovable in the Father's sight. So he presents you before the Father. The Father goes, perfect. <laughs> now what am I talking about? I'm talking about the condition of your spirit, not your conduct, not your behavior. He's looking at the condition of your spirit and going, this is perfect. I find no fault with it. And you are that way today. Do you know that? The condition of your spirit, it needs to grow, of course, needs, to, needs these things. But in its created state, the Father goes, it's good. It's good. I, I count it holy. I find no fault with it. Come on, if, if, <laughs> if there was a fault with something, God could find it, couldn't he? Aren't you thankful when God finds faults in your life? He shows them to you one at a time. <laughs> aren't, aren't you, you, if you're not thankful for this, you need to get thankful for it. Have you ever got done with a fault and God helped you and you got through it and you thought, man, I think I'm just about there. I think I'm, me and Jesus, I'm, I'm just a couple steps away. And God says, yeah, let me show you one more thing. <laughs> and you get that one done. You go, well, that must be the last one. I think I'm there now. God goes, you're doing good. You're doing, I got one other thing over here I, I wanted to show you, talk to you about. And it is a, is it a process. And with your last breath, there'll be another thing, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's just because we're ever endeavoring to press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus, endeavoring to be just like him, right? And so, um, praise God. How did I get over there? Uh, anyway, <laughs> you needed it. <laughs> um, yes, and so you will grow. This is one reason why, and, and let me, hear, hear me. This is one reason why you don't want to let a sin and then guilt and condemnation keep you from the Father. This happens to so many people. This is why a lot of people don't come to church anymore and don't have any relationship with God because they got something in their life and they just go, well, I'm just so terrible. And I'm you don't think God knew you weren't gonna, that you were going to do that? God already knows all this. What He needs you to do is stick with Him. I have done some dumb stuff. Multiple times over, made mistakes, said things I shouldn't have said. Hmm? Somebody said, you have? Yes, I have. And stop looking at me like that, because so have you. <laughs> yes. 
You want to know one thing I learned early on? I heard Brother Copeland say it years ago. When you sin, don't run from God, run to him. Yeah. It takes faith to go back to the Father and humble yourself and say, Lord, you already know I did it again or I missed it or whatever it is. But I believe in you. I be this takes faith, doesn't it? I believe you love me. I believe you'll help me. And I'm sticking with you. I'm sticking with you. Yeah. This, this is what you have to do. Because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to miss it. Don't allow that to throw you off. Right? You're in the process, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I might not have it all right, but I know this. God will help me. We'll get there. I'm sticking with him. I'm never going to get there if I stop coming to church and leave him. But I'm going to stick with him. God likes that. He, he, he values that. That actually takes some spiritual courage and gumption. It takes no courage to go home and stick your head under the covers and feel sorry for yourself and quit coming to church and quit on God because I'm so terrible. I did this or did that. God has seen worse than what you did. And he's redeemed people from worse than what you did. Okay? So humble yourself and stick with him. Praise God. Holy, uh, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Come on, will Jesus present you like this? He, he is presenting you like this today. This is how you stand before the Father today. And uh, this is how you will be presented when you see the Father face to face. Yes. If. Did you hear me? Why? Because verse 23, what's verse 23 say? It says, if you continue in the faith. I'm in Colossians 1 there still. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. So you heard the gospel, right? Yes. You believe that you were a sinner, that you needed a Savior. You believe God's real. Yes. Jesus was born of a virgin, came to the earth, became sin for you, hung on the cross for you, died for you, rose from the dead for you. And you're, you confess that boldly and openly, right? Yes. And so you believe today you are saved. If you hold to that all the way to when you see the Father, you'll be presented holy, unblameable, and irreprovable on His side. Now, you're not going to do this. But if somebody in the middle of the, their life, after they make that decision, goes, no, nope, you know what? I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus. I'm done with Him. I don't want Him. I'm, I'm quitting the Lord. I don't even think sin is real or heaven is real. If they do that, that's where the if comes in. They won't be presented this way. Can you be moved out of the faith? That's what this verse is saying. Don't be moved out of the faith. Continue in the faith. Can you say amen to this? Now, not only can you be moved out of the faith, we've talked about this. When you get in faith for your situation, believe in God for healing, believe in God for financial provision. You're confident God's going to heal you. You're confident God's going to meet your needs. When you get like that, can you be moved out of faith that way? Can you lose your confidence? Can you lose your faith and say, well, I was confident, but now, I mean, it's so bad. I don't know if God's going to meet my needs. I've had this thing wrong with my body for so long, honestly, I don't have any confidence I'm going to get healed. When you've done that, you've been moved away from faith, out of faith. Now, that being moved out of that kind of faith will cost you victory in this life. It won't cost you your salvation. But if you, if you lose your confidence about God meeting your needs, your needs aren't going to be met because these things work by and through faith. Do you see this? You leave the faith, that'll cost you your salvation. That's the worst thing that you can lose. That's the worst thing that can happen to any believer ever is to leave the faith. But if you just lose your faith for the situation you're facing, it's not going to cost you your salvation, but you can't enjoy victory like that. You got to stay in faith, don't you? Did it cost Peter when he was walking on the water? It cost him, didn't he? He started in faith, didn't stay in faith. And when he came out of faith, it cost him what he was enjoying while he was in faith. And go, come on, say it with him. Say, I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be moved out of faith. Will the devil try to move you out of faith? Yes. Will he try to move you out of the faith? And when he realizes he can't do that, then he's going to try to keep you from living by faith down here so that you are saved, but you are a... a, a that was a strong way to say it. I'm not going to say it. You are, you're a defeated Christian that can't really do much for God because you're not enjoying any victory yourself. And so he'll try to move you out of faith for this life. Why would God have to tell us uh, to continue in the faith and don't be moved? He must know something. One, you can be. Number two, the devil's coming to move you. Do we need to be aware of any of these things and be on guard against it? 
Anybody ever had the opportunity to be moved out of faith where anything's concerned? <laughs> huh? Come on, when you've been praying, when you've been standing, you've been speaking the word, and it's not changing, that's an opportunity to be moved, isn't it? Not us. Not us around here. I'll tell you what, North Smoke people are going to be some non-moving people, right? <laughs> On our gravestones, we ought to put, none of those things moved me, <laughs> right? Just boop, right there. That should be us, right? There's, there's some certain things that you want people to say around, uh, about us around here, right? One of the things they want us to say about, we want people to say about us is that the things of God are important to them. We can tell by how they're, what, they're, what they do in their services, by what their building looks like. Man, God's important to them. We can just tell. Yeah, I went to Keith Moore's church I remember years ago for the first time, been many times over again. And I wouldn't have had to listen to one message to know God's things are important to these people. I can tell by their attitude. I can tell by how they dress. I can tell by how well they take care of their facility. I can tell by, the, by, by what, within what goes on. I, can, I don't have to hear anybody tell me. I can see it. These people honor God. Do you see this? One reason why I wanted the grass cut today. Did you hear me? It should be that way, if at all possible. Why? It's important. It demonstrates our honor for God. What else we want people? There's a lot of things. I'm not going to go through the whole list. What's something else we want people to say about North Smoke people? That is the most unmoved people I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they were going through hell, was breaking loose in their life, and they just got going, praise God, I'm coming through. I'll tell you right now, God said this to me. He told me I'm coming through. I'm coming through. i tell you right now, the most unmoved people you will ever see. That's what Kenneth Hagin's wife said to him one day. She said something like, I tell you what, I bet the house could just be on fire and you wouldn't even be worried about it. He goes, well, what would I worry about it then? I couldn't do anything about it. Just get out of the house. You'll find this about people that are spiritual. We, the spiritual is not spooky. We think if I come in here and I'm praying in tongues all the time and I'm, I'm nudging you going, do you see that angel up there? I see it. Do you, we think that's spiritual stuff. And you don't even see an angel. You know, it's just spooky. Spiritual people have a disposition about them. And one of the things that you recognize about spiritual people is peace. Peace. And peace comes from faith. That's why you're so peaceful, because you trust God. Do you see this? What one of them say about us? I tell you, that's the most unmoved people you'll ever find. I mean, she got a report worse than anything I've ever heard, and she just looked at me and said, God will help me. None of these things move me. <laughs> this is us, right? I'm talking about North Smoke people. Go with me to, um, let's get into this today then. I, this is so much, so good what the Lord's given us. You can just hang around all day on one thing. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Let me look at a, some verses over there. We're talking about not being moved out of faith. Before you are able to not be moved out of faith, you need to know how to get in faith, right? Um, I can't move you out of a pool if you weren't in the pool. You got to get in before you can be moved out. And so last week we, we tried to start. The Lord took it. I had to take notes on my own message last week when I got done. I had to go there back this week and watch my message and then take notes on it because... It wasn't what I had in my notes, all of it. It just, I got up here and we went through three lines and it went, and so I enjoyed it. <laughs> but um, we didn't get to it last week, but what we need to talk about today, and we haven't changed topics, we're still talking about be not moved, but we need to talk about how do I get in faith? If I don't know how to get in faith, there's no sense in talking about how to not be moved out of faith because I don't know how to get in. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you five things how to, how to get in faith. Anybody interested in this? Yes. I started to say this last week. I said this last week, but I, that, that this is one of the most important things you're ever going to hear. But then I didn't get to tell you one of the most important things you're ever going to hear. <laughs> and so I'm not saying that again this week about this message. It's the same message I'm saying it about. <laughs> I never want to be the preacher that texts you every you know, week and go, you got to be at church. This is going to be the most important thing you ever heard. <laughs> How many know about week seven? You're going to think, you said that in the last seven weeks. And so, but, but how to get in faith, this is one of the most important things you can ever learn. And the reason is, is because 
Are you going to face challenges in your life? Yes. Adversity. Let me read you this verse in Hebrews 11, verse 33. Um, I'll read this to you out of the King James. Hebrews 11, 33. It's talking about a group of people who by faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. Keep that up there for a second. How do you obtain something God promised you? Now listen to how contrary this is to religion's idea. Well, if God's promised you something, it's going to happen no matter what you do. That verse says you have to obtain the promise through faith. And so God can promise, can God make a promise to somebody and it goes unobtained? Why? Didn't he want it for them? Well, he wouldn't have promised it to them if he didn't want it for them. And so a promise can go unobtained for lack of faith. What else do they do through faith? They stop the mouth of a lion. Let's talk about Daniel in the lion's den, isn't it? When he got thrown in the lion's den, was that adversity? Did he have a problem in front of him? <laughs> Is that a problem? That's a problem. You're sleeping with lions, you have a problem. How did he get through it? Begged God. The scripture tells you how he got through it. If you read Daniel 6, it said he was delivered because he believed or trusted in his God. That's why he was delivered. Not because he was in covenant with God, not just because it was God's predetermined will. This is why he was delivered, because when he went down there, he was saying, God's going to deliver me from this. He was confident in the lion's den. Can you be confident in the midst of adversity? This is how you get delivered. Keep going. Uh, verse 34. What else happened through faith? Quench the violence of fire. It's talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Did they have a problem? Did they face adversity? And what, what did they do? They got out of it because God had already decided you're going to be delivered. They got out of it because they cried and begged God, and God felt sorry for them. Now, now, why am I pointing these things out? Because that's how a lot of Christians operate when they face adversity. But there's no scriptural backing for any of that. Not for people who live by faith. Do you know why they were delivered? Nebuchadnezzar said it. He said they were delivered because they trusted in their God. Yes. What'd they say? You throw us in, God will deliver us. Is that confidence? And, and so on. Out of weakness were made strong, wax valiant in flight, turned to flight the armies of their enemies. Uh, even says some women were uh, raised, uh, saw their dead raised to life again. And then we can talk some more about this other stuff. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better re resurrection. These were people that were martyred because of their faith. Did they hold on to their faith? See, people look at that and think, well, that's defeat. That's not defeat. That is victory. <laughs> How did they get that victory? Through faith. And so, why am I reading this to you? Because we talked about it last week, and this is what, what the message was last week. When facing adversity, faith is the only way to overcome it. You have to hear from God, right? Talk about the same. That's how faith comes. And then you have to get confident that what God said, He will do. And that is how you win. That is how you overcome. This is why one of the most important things you can ever learn is how to get in faith. Because if you, I'm telling you, if you ever do get in real faith, I'm talking about the real stuff, you are positioned to experience victory in your life. Now, a lot of people are calling things faith that's not faith. Let me, let me give you some statements. Prayer does not necessarily equal faith. If I'm praying, that's faith. Not necessarily. What is faith? Faith is confidence. I won't go through all the definition, but in, in short, it's confidence that what God promised me will come to pass. Can you pray with no confidence? And will you get results like that? You won't. Prayer does not equal faith. Here, here's one. When I say making a confession, do you know what that means, right? That means I'm, I'm declaring what God says. That doesn't equal faith. You can do that with no confidence. Do you hear me? I'll tell you what else isn't faith. 
praying and hoping for the best. <laughs> a lot of people are like, well, we're just going to pray and trust God and hope for the best. What? Trust God to do what? If you're, if you're trusting God, you're confident. So there's no, we're just going to hope for the best. A lot of times people think they're in faith because they're praying and wanting something to happen. That is not faith. You don't hit faith until you hit confidence. That's where you find faith. Do you see this? Oh, we're going to get into some good things today. <laughs> you need to stick with me. Um, faith is genuine confidence. Say genuine confidence. It's genuine confidence based on something God said to me. That's what it is. Not false bravado, right? It's not just, well, I know faith acts like this. I know, faith, I know David was in faith, and he, he talked bold to Goliath, and I know the three Hebrews are in faith, and they talked bold to Nebuchadnezzar, and I know the woman with the issue of blood was in faith, and she talked bold, and so I guess I'll talk bold, because if I do, that means I'm in faith. Not necessarily. You can put on a false bravado and false junk and have no faith at all. Yeah, that's right. Do you see this? We're talking about the real stuff. Say the real stuff. I'm going to minister on some things I did when we went to Philadelphia. I'm going to touch on some of them today. They were really good, the things the Lord gave us. The real stuff, real faith is genuine confidence, and it's right in here. That's where it is. Faith is of the heart. What did, what did Romans 10 say? 10, 8, with the heart man believes. Proverbs 3, I know you know this one, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, you could say to the mountain, be removed, and it will if you don't doubt in your heart. Where is faith, where does it have its roots at? Right in here. Right in here. It's confidence in here, and it's not fabricated, it's not worked up, it's just there. And when it gets there, I'm in faith. And when I'm in faith, I better start planning the victory parade because I'm going to come out and I'm going to come through. And so what I want to talk to you about today is if you don't have confidence, if I'm not confident about what I'm facing in my life, how do I get confident? How do I get in faith? Have you ever been praying something and you're just like, if you're being honest with yourself in your heart, you're just like, I'm praying this, but I'm not confident it's going to happen. That's a problem. You need to stop praying and get this fixed. Do, do you hear me? That means there's a lack of faith there. Well, you, there's no sense in praying now if there's lack of faith there. You need to pray a different prayer. You need to pray, Lord, help me with this. Help me to get confident so that what I pray can actually happen. Is faith important in your prayer? I heard somebody say something that, that and, and it's, I, I like it, but don't, don't get mad at me or mince words. They say, like, as prayer doesn't make faith work, faith makes prayer work. That's what makes prayer work, the confidence when you pray. That's what makes it go. And so if you don't have that, <laughs> well, I mean, what should you do? Better get that fixed first. Better get that lined up first. And then go ahead and pray. And I'm, don't look too concerned. This is not hard. It can be done with just a little bit of effort on your part. You can get confident. But that's what we're talking about today. How do I get in faith? How do I get to the place where I'm confident that what God said to me will come to pass? Because that's how I win. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, number one. Put uh, Romans 10, 17 on the screen. Number one. How do I get in faith? Number one, to get in faith... And this is number one in this order. In this order. So don't go to number five. But this is, you have to do number one first. Number one, you must hear from God. How do I get in faith? Number one, the first thing I have to do is I have to hear from God. Now why? Because who is my faith in? 
It's not, and I'm working on correcting, the Lord's helping me, I'm working on correcting myself to not just talk about faith without saying faith in God. That's, in God is the key part. It's not just, a lot of people think, well, just have faith, just believe everything's going to work out. I'm not saying that, that's, that's not bad, I mean, that's better than worrying about things not working out, I mean, I'm not, I'm not throwing that out, but just believe things are going to work out. Why? And believe who? Do you hear me? It's kind of like, well, just have a hopeful mentality that it's going to work out. And again, I'm not against that. I think that's probably helpful in a lot of ways. But that's not how believers operate. You know why I believe it's going to work out? Because I heard from God. I'm going to take care of you and work this out. And so my, I'm not just believing it will. I've heard from him it will. My faith is in him. See the difference? It's a big difference. Do you see this? I have to hear from him. Come on, say it with me. I have to hear from God because my faith's in God. That's who you're having faith in. Can you have faith in God to do something that he didn't even tell you he would do? When Abraham and Sarah wanted to have a baby, remember how old they were? 75 when they heard the promise? They didn't just decide one day. All things are possible with God. And if we can believe, all things are possible. And so let's just believe for it. We're going to have a kid when we're 70. They didn't just come up with that. Where did, where did faith for that come from? God said that to them. You're going to do this. I'm promising you this. And so then because God said that to them, they put their faith in God for that to happen in their lives. Do you see the difference? I mean, I joked with you last time. My mom and dad are in their mid-60s. Can they hear this about Abraham and Sarah and just go, well, if they did it, then I can have a baby at that old. Can they do that? Well, why? Yeah, so I mean, with God, all things are possible. And if we can believe it's possible, right? Right? Why can't we have a baby? If God did it for Sarah and we want one, because that's what God said to Abraham and Sarah. And if God didn't say that to Vince and Rhonda, Vince and Rhonda ain't pumping down no baby at 65. It's just not going to happen. I don't care how much they believe. Do you know what you have to do before you believe? Believing comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. It's hearing before faith. I heard from God. Now, if God showed up at Vince Arana's house tonight and said, you're going to have a baby, you know, I'd probably pray in tongues for him because I think, I think you missed it, but <laughs> let's, we'll see. And here's the thing. We don't have to argue with people whether or not they heard from God. We'll see if you heard from God or not. Well, does what he say actually come to pass for you? And if it never does, then guess what? You didn't hear. Yeah, you missed it. That's right. Anybody ever missed it before? Put a couple hands up. <laughs> it's okay. See, we're all in the same boat. It's, it's fine. Um, but endeavor to use your faith. Don't be scared to miss it. Go ahead and get out there and make mistakes and miss it and seek God and let him correct you. I mean, you can't steer a parked car. Get out there and try and do your best and seek his heart and say, Lord, I'm, I saw what you said in your word. I'm, I'm after it. I'm doing it. And that's how you learn. God will straighten you out. One, one day years ago, one time years ago, I was uh, at Joe's football game, high school football game. And Joe, uh, he was a little better than I was at high school football. I'm kidding. He was a lot better than I was. Um, but anyway, he, he ran over on the sideline and fell down. I think it was one of his last games of the season. Dislocated his elbow. Dislocated it. And... Uh, I was sitting up in stands, and I had been, I was very young in ministry, young in the Lord. And uh, I'd been learning a lot about faith, a lot about the Word, a lot about miracles. And so I had this thought, well, I'm going to go lay hands on him. God's going to straighten him out. Everybody on the sideline, including the coaches, is going to get saved. People are pretty much going to carry me out here on the shoulders. I'm going to start a church. I don't, you know, I didn't, I didn't get that far, but you understand <laughs> You know, and so I came down from the stands. There's a lot of people there, a lot of people on the team. Told Joe, I'm going to pray for you, and God's going to heal you right here. <laughs> Somebody said, why are you telling this story? I'm telling it to help you. I laid hands on him. People were listening. You know, people, I knew these people that were around. They didn't know me as a preacher, but they knew me before. Here I am laying hands on Joe. Joe's arms messed up in a thing. I pray hands. I, I release all the faith I had that I thought I had. Open my eyes. Nothing. Okay. 
Well, I hugged him, told him, went back upstairs, went to the hospital. Now listen, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I try not to be. And so when stuff like that happens, thank God I've been taught well enough. I don't start going, God, I don't understand why you didn't do a miracle. No, no. I immediately think, I must not did something right here. It's not God. It's me. Now why did I go down there? Because lay hands on the sick and they'll cover and pray for them and it's wonderful. That's, that's good. That's the word. So it didn't happen. And Joe's arm got wrapped up, and he didn't play the next game. And his arm works fine now, you see. So he got it and went on to play more. But, but my prayer that night did not instantly do anything that I saw like I thought it would. And over the, now, now, do you think God was pleased that I, that, I, that I wanted to be a doer of the word so bad? So I'm going. I've been learning. I'm doing this. He looks at the heart, not the execution. And he knew, son, you're a little off here, but you're trying. And I can work with that. Do you hear me? I didn't hear from God to go down there and do that and pray for him like that. I came up with that on my own. <laughs> I'm going to go, God, and you're going to do this. Not how it works. God says you're going to go and I'm going to do this. Do you see the difference? He didn't send me down there to do that. I was doing that because I thought that's what he would want me to do, and I did it with the right heart, and so everything's okay. But was it faith? I didn't hear. Do you hear this? Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I only do what my Father shows me to do. Specifically, the Father speaking to me, showing me to do that. Do you hear me? And so the scriptures are right and they are true. It says lay hands on the sick. You want to be obedient, right? You want to be obedient, right? How are you going to decide who you lay hands on and who you don't lay hands on? Lay hands on the sick, so every time you cross a sick person, lay hands on them? Is that what Jesus did? See what I'm saying? Jesus went to the, the gates that had the pools around him one day and went to one man. And there was a bunch of other sick people there. Why didn't he lay hands on any of them? The father didn't tell him to. So he didn't do it. Do you see this? Why am I talking about this? You have to hear from God because your faith is in him to do something. Now there's been other times I did hear from God and did pray or did say something and it did happen. And I won't share any of those today. You got your example for the day. But don't let that discourage you. I've learned over the years. Well, I just kind of went down there on my own. And, uh, and there's a lot of things I don't understand anyway. But I know God's will is healing. I know he wants to lay hands on the sick and to recover. I know faith works. I know his power works. So if something didn't go just right like I thought it would, just something I don't know. So back to the drawing board. Lord, give me some more light. Give me some more revelation. Do you see this? I'm circling back. What am I talking about? I'm talking about you have to hear from God to have faith in him to do something. Had God said, go down there, lay hands on him, I'm going to heal him right there on the sideline. And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. And then acted on what God said. That would have been real faith. Why? What made that real faith? Because I heard from God first. God told me he was going to do that. And then I yielded to it. Why wasn't it really faith the way I did it? Because I didn't hear to do that. Do you see this? People get upset, well, why didn't God just do the miracle anyway? I mean, Joe's hurt and he loves football. And this is... Just stop. Who are you to raise your fist at your good father in any accusatory tone at all? Just be quiet. <laughs> He's the one that hung the stars in the sky and created your dumb little self. Be quiet. And just go, no, God, I know you're good. I know healing's his, your will for his life. I know this even happening to him wasn't your will. It's not what you wanted. This is part of the curse. I know that. I'm not questioning you, but I missed it, didn't I, Lord? <laughs> He's going to go, yeah, son, you missed it. But I was looking at your heart. And I, it ple even what you did pleased me. Do you see this? I was a long way around telling you you have to hear from God to have faith in him. 
I better kind of get going here or this is going to turn out to be another week, <laughs> which is okay. Come on, what do you got to do to, to have faith? You got to hear from God. Abraham and Sarah didn't just come up with what they wanted to believe for. They heard. That's where their faith came from. How about Peter walking on the water to go to Jesus? Do you notice that he asked permission first? He didn't, Peter didn't just go, Jesus, you just preached to us yesterday. With God, all things are possible. And if I can believe all things are possible for me, I heard you say it yesterday, so I'm getting out of the boat and I'm walking to you. That's not what he did. He said, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come to you. He knew he needed to hear and get permission first. And then once he heard, come, faith came. Now I can trust God to keep me up when I step out of there because he actually told me to do it. Do you see this? That's where his faith came from. The three Hebrews, same thing, where their faith came from. God had told Israel, if you go into the fire, you won't be burned. That's why they said, if you throw us in, God will deliver us. It wasn't just, what we have to be on guard against is this. Finding a verse, deciding what we want, and I'm just going to believe for this without even asking God about it. I need to say that again. <laughs> we have to watch this. Well, I found a verse, and then this is what I want that's in line with this verse, and so I'm just going to believe for this. You have to watch it. Now, if you found a verse, you're on, you're, on, you're on the right track. But here's what you do when you need to hear from God. You go to his written word. Father, I, I know you say things in here about delivering me from anxiety and depression and, and, and those things. I know you say things. So I'm going to go to your written word. And I see over here in John 14, you say that you have given me your peace. And Philippians 4, 6 says, be careful for nothing. And 1 Peter, cast my care on you. And I can have peace that passes understanding. And I'm searching his written word. And while I'm doing that, I'm looking inside. And I'm going, Father, what are you saying to me? specifically about this that's in front of me. This is the word of God. There's power in it. Hebrews 4 says it. It's alive. It's full of power. It's wonderful. And we should cling to it, and we uphold it as the highest thing in this church. Nothing higher than this. But while I'm in the word of God, facing this in front of me, I'm searching the scriptures to find out what God says about my situation in here. You always start here. Always start here. If you don't start here, you're going to get off. You always start here. But while I'm searching the word of God, I'm listening for the word from God to me for this. Because this is not the same as that. And that is not the same as this. And just because you did something doesn't mean that I should just do it. And just because somebody did something even in Scripture doesn't mean that I should just do it. There's a lot of Scriptures. How about if you get sick? Call the elders of the church, right? What else can you do? You can believe you receive when you pray. You can speak to your body. You can, you can lay hands on the sick. I've heard people say, oh, I just laid hands on myself, right? Which one are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I'm just going to do all of them. Just hope one happens. <laughs> Find out. I'll just do all of them. I don't have no. See what I'm saying? There's no faith in that. There's no confidence in that because you're just doing a bunch of stuff. Maybe one time you got sick and you sought the Lord and the Lord said, do this. And then so what do you do? You go do that. And always be in line with this. Always. You might, the Lord might say, call, call a pastor and have him agree with you and anoint you with oil. And, and do it like that. The next time, the Lord might say, start speaking this over your body. I want you to speak this. Do it like this. Now, you always speak over your body, so don't misunderstand me. You can always speak healing over your body and things like that. But, but my point is, in every situation, you got to be looking inside, listening. And, and it'll be simpler, you know, so simple sometimes. You don't even make it complicated. You know, you get a little symptom on your body, and you go, Lord, I know your word says this, and I believe that. And the Lord will just go, yeah, right there. That's what I want you to continue to say over yourself. Now you've heard. Now faith can start. Do you hear this? You got to watch. There's a scripture that said that, uh, that, that, that a preacher used for an airplane. He was believing for an airplane, and God led him to the ver a verse that said, I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. God showed him that verse. Do you know how I heard from God? Do you know, know, do you, do you know, do you know how I know he heard from God? He got his airplane. What I can't do is just decide, well, God will get me an airplane. 
I'm going to believe for an airplane myself. And I'm going to use that same verse. And I'm going to do just what he did. If God didn't talk to me about an airplane, why could I trust him to get me one? Well, I have a verse. High, high places of the earth. Well, maybe that means a hot air balloon. <laughs> How do you know? You don't know. Until you go talk to him. And I'm telling you, here's how good God is. If, if you desire something, does he not want it for you? If it's good and not sin and you desire something, he wants it for you. But go talk to him about it. Go to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I have this on my heart. I'd like to have this. Will you talk to me about this? I know your word says this about me being, let's say you wanted a new truck. New car. Lord, I'm desiring a new car. I'd like to have one. Can I talk to you about that? Come up here. Let's talk. Well, what, do you, what did you find in my word? Well, I found in your word that you gave Abraham this, that you blessed Isaac with this. I know that you want me to be wealthy and prosperous. I know you want me to have the good of the land. I, I know this is what you want for me. And just talk to the Lord about it and see what he has to say. He might say, yeah, you can have one of those. But just wait a little bit before you start looking. You know what you need to do? Stop looking. Do you know what comes right, right before buying? Looking a lot. <laughs> if we can get you looking, we can get you ready to buy. But you can ask the Lord about that. I had it on my heart for years about a, a nice truck, a new truck, not nice one. And uh, well, there was times we could have just went and borrowed and got it and stuff, but we didn't have a good witness about it. And I, I you know, I'd, I'd, I'd say seek the Lord. That's, that's probably kind of light. God knew my heart. We were kind of just acknowledging him in it. I think both of our cars combined, we had 400,000 miles on both cars. <laughs> and so the Lord knew what we wanted. He knew what I wanted. He knew what was on our heart. Well, when we had no money for the car, the Lord said, every seed produces after its own kind. I want you to sow your truck. Okay. Who do you want me to sow it to? And I'm thinking, what am I going to drive? You know, I mean, we, one car family. That's what you start thinking. But I was pretty sure I heard. And when you're pretty sure you heard and you have a spouse, you go to your spouse, you say, I'm pretty sure I heard this from the Lord. <laughs> what do you think? And I went and told Amber. And she goes, yeah. Yeah. And I go, I think I know who the Lord told me to give it to. And she goes, I think I know who the Lord told us to give it to, too. And I said, well, who did he tell you to give it to? And it was one of those things where one of us went, you first. <laughs> and we both said the same person. So we knew we heard from God. Right? And so we got the truck ready, fixed it up, made repairs on it. You don't want to give somebody junk. Fix it up. Wash it. Clean it. I did. We got to put a couple hundred dollars in or whatever to get it fixed up. We sold it to somebody. Gave it to them. Um, over the next couple months, the Lord brought in a nice big chunk of money for us to do something we needed to do financially. And so then it opened up a window where maybe we could do something where a car was concerned. Now, I don't believe God's best is to go borrow for everything. Um, we should be the lender, not the borrower, right? I don't think it's a sin to borrow, but I don't, I don't believe that's God's best for anybody. I believe we should be endeavoring to get a place where we don't have to borrow. But being honest, we weren't there. And so now we're seeking the Lord, going, well, Lord, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to borrow? Or you want to just wait? And he said, I just want you to wait for a while. And so we waited for a while. And we live up on a hill about 300 feet down. And we got to put, we, I have to push the trash can up every week on wheels uphill. And I'd push the trash can up and I'd go, Lord, I thank you for my new truck. I thank you for my, new, push, you, you're not, you haven't seen, the, if you got that look on your face, you're still smiling. You haven't seen the hill. That'd be a real time to get mad that you didn't have a truck to haul it up. I'm put, thank you, Lord, for my new truck. Thank you for my new truck. So we start, you know, we're not even really looking too hard. We're just waiting and then I felt released today, one day to start looking. And then we were talking about it, and I thought, they say they have this one, they got this deal going on, and, and we had this money come in and so we can do it. And I'm, I said, I'm not sure if this is what the Lord wants us to do, but what are we doing? We're checking in here, because faith comes by hearing, 
You want him to help you with something, you better, you better heard from him on it. So we're checking in here, and we, we thought, well, let's go down and look. I mean, this is the price. Let's go down and look. And if we go down and get a bad witness and just don't think it's right, we'll just come back home. We, just, we won't get it. We won't get it. You know, we're fine. We're, we, we, before we left, we said, Lord, we'll do whatever you want. Now, I was trying to push down excitement because I thought, I'm getting close to my new truck. <laughs> push it down. Push it. Push it back. And we got down there, and we drove it. We both had a good witness about it. And the guy said, the guy goes, you know what? He said, now the truck was just the color, red. I'd, I'd been wanting red. That was one of my, the colors I'd picked. Just the one I wanted. It was brand new. It was 2019, the truck was, but it was in 2020. And so they had knocked the price down because they're trying to get it off the lot. And the guy said, he goes, this one's been on the back of the lot for months. He said, we just couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> This is God. People would come and God would blind their eyes. They wouldn't see it. <laughs> and, and the deal worked out. And I found out recently just how good of a deal it was we got on it based on what I found out that's happened the last couple of years. Now, we, we, just to be transparent, we uh, financed it. And we're paying it off. And we're believing to pay it off quickly. But do you see how God worked through all that? We were trusting him because we were listening to what he had. This is how faith comes, by hearing. So you don't go buy something if you don't hear it. Because he's not going to help you with it. you got to hear from him. Well, that was a long way around telling you that. But I think you get number one, don't you? <laughs> Come on, say, i got to hear. i got to hear. We're, we're always looking inside, aren't we? Always listening. Oh, my gosh, you got to be kidding me. Is that it? <laughs> That's, geez. My, is that right? Am I looking at this right? Yes, yes. Some of you sound disappointed. Others you say, yes, you're right. It's you're done. Don't get an idea. Go to number five. You're not going to get there. Um, what do you have to do to have faith? I, I have no idea where that service just went. Um, the first step to getting in faith is that you have to hear. Faith for your situation comes by hearing. Here it is. I won't go to point two, so you are set free. Just stick with me for the rest of point one. <laughs> it comes from hearing from God directly about your situation. Did you hear me? I don't want to get it mixed up. We uphold this written word higher than anything. But if you didn't need the Spirit of God to speak to you about things, God would have just gave you this. He didn't just give you this. He gave you the inward witness because there's things you're going to run into. What verse can I go to that's going to tell me whether or not I should buy that truck? Huh? I can't. There's no verse in there. I, I need to hear from God. When to do it. How to do it. Right? I can find verses in here that promise me that I'll have good things and substance and you know, uh, you know, there's trucks in there, cars and transportation, you know. I mean, for Abraham and these guys, they rode around and stuff, and they didn't have a car. But you understand, there's stuff like that in there. But, but how would I know for my life? I need to hear from God, specifically, for myself. And not just do what somebody else did, because they did it. And I'll, I'll say this, even in Scripture, even in Scripture, well, I'm going to do this because this is what David did. Well, you know, maybe Isaac did something different. Huh? Maybe Joseph did something a little different. Which one are you going to do? You got to hear from God yourself, right? Do you see this? And so you need to hear from God specifically. Come on, say specifically. For my situation. So what do you do? You search his word. Come on, you always start with the written word. I'm searching his word. And as I do, what, am I, what else am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm searching the Word of God, and as I do, I'm listening for the Word from God. Listening to the Word from God that will speak directly to my situation. I'm not just picking a verse. Well, I'm going to pick this one. Well, why'd you pick that one? I don't know. I just did. No, I want the Lord to lead me because I need a word right now for what I'm facing for this situation. Even if it's Him going, it's this verse for this situation. For now, this is the one I want you to release your faith for. What, wisdom's the principal thing, right? Wisdom, that means hearing from God. Um, what do you say? You say this, Lord, what are you saying to me about this? G give me uh, just another, I'll cue you here, Joe. 
this is what you say. You say, Lord, what are you saying to me about this that's in front of me? I know you. I know your will because of what your written word says. I, I, know, I know your word says this. You always go to the Father. I know your word says that. But I'm asking you specifically, what are you saying to me about this? And the Lord might say to you, I'm saying specifically what I said to you in that verse. That's what I'm speaking to you about this today. And that might be all you need. But you heard from him. See, say you're battling anxiety and depression. You know, I mean, what more do you need than John 14, 26 and 27 and John 14, 1, where Jesus said, I've given you my peace. Don't let your heart be troubled. You don't need anything else other than that. But you need the Lord to quicken that word to you. You need, you need the Lord to say, that's it. Hold on to that one. Hold on to dear life for that one. You need, you need the word from him. This is, th see, David didn't go fight Goliath because he read something in the law. He went down to fight Goliath because he heard from God. Now, he did know the law said, I'll make your enemy run from you seven ways. But he did that being led. Jesus didn't, listen, this is so good for you. Jesus didn't live by the law. He fulfilled the law. But day to day, he lived by the leading of the Spirit on the inside. God speaking to him. That's how he lived. He didn't live by, well, I'm going to go to the law. Well, David did this. I'll do what David did. That's, that's not how he lived. Are you catching this? And so, do we throw the Bible out? A thousand times. No, we cling to it with all of our heart and life. And sometimes God will say, go do what David did. Right? He'll <laughs> say, David encouraged himself in the Lord. You need to do that. Right? God will say, go do what Jehoshaphat did. He sent the praisers to the front. But it's a quickened word. It's not just you coming up with what you're going to do. You ought to know you well enough by now to know if you come up with it by yourself, it's not going to work. But if God showed you, quicken something to you, go have the elders lay hands on you, anoint you with oil, go do it. Right? Go do it. It's a quickened word. Is what you, and that's how faith comes. How does faith come? By hearing. And so when God says, go do this, Boom, faith just came. That's how faith comes. When, we, when the hallway flooded, I told you last week, one of the first things that we did is started to acknowledge the Lord. I didn't just, do you think I know any verses that could deal with any of that? Do you think I have any that could, you know, I mean, I've preached a few years, so by now, do you think I knew anything that I could just do and come up with? I could have started doing a thousand different things. What's the first thing you do? Lord, what do we need to do here? What are you saying to me about this? That's where the faith came, to cast the care, believe for favor, better than before. We heard. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. And then this, is, this, uh, this part of it I need to just share with you and then I'll be done. Many struggle to get in faith. And the reason why is because they haven't heard and they know they haven't heard. Did you hear me? And so what they try to do is they haven't heard, and they know they haven't heard, so they try to work up faith. And they never get to the place where they're confident because faith is built on what God has said to you about that situation. And until you heard, you can't work up faith. And so a lot of times what people do is they'll start going through religious motions. Well, I'm believing, I'm doing this. But in their quiet, honest moment, when they look inside, they know there's no confidence there. And why? Why? Because I haven't heard from him. But when I heard from him, that changes everything. I told you last week when I was believing God for a wife and couldn't figure out how I was going to meet her. I lacked confidence. I knew there was probably a woman out there what, like I was believing for, but I had no confidence about how I was ever going to cross paths with this woman if she existed. <laughs> And so I was, I was speaking the word. I was confessing, I have a wife that has this. I have a wife that has that. She's a Proverbs 31 woman. She, I, was, I confessed all the Proverbs 31 things that the wife had. I was saying that over my life. But when it came to, yeah, but how are you going to meet her? I was like, shoot, I don't even know if I ever will. I, mean, I'm, I, I had no confidence. I'm just being honest. I was not confident where that was concerned because I hadn't heard from God. I knew she existed. I knew, I was joking when I said, I knew a woman like that existed because God revealed it to me in his word. These kind of women do exist. But when it came to that specific point, how are you going to meet her? I was like, beats me. <laughs>
But then one day God showed me that verse in Genesis 2 where he created Adam and brought her, created Eve and brought her to Adam. And God quickened that word to me. He quickened it to me in the written word. He used his written word and quickened it to me. And he said, I'm going to do that for you. You don't have to be concerned about her. I will present her to you. And what happened when I heard, that was the word of God and it was the word from God. And when I heard that, faith came and it destroyed my doubts. And I thought, you did it for Adam. You're no respecter persons. You will do it for me. But I had to hear. Come on, stand to your feet today and say, I have to hear. I have to hear. Go ahead, Joe. I have to hear. Come on, if you want to get in faith, come on, what do you have to do? I have to hear from God, don't I? How, how do you do that? Go ahead and bow your heads. How do you do that? You're facing something today. You're facing something right now. You're facing a trial. You're facing a test. You're facing a challenge. How, how do you hear from God? You start with His written word. And you go to what do you find scriptures? You go to what his written word says about what you're facing. And you start looking at those verses. Find them all. You know, I mean, just study it and find out uh, what God says about it. Get convinced about what he wants for your life. And you're meditating those verses and you're looking at those verses. But while you're doing that, you're saying, Lord, give me wisdom. Speak to me about this that I'm facing. Show me what you would have me to do with this. I know your will is, is this for my life. I know your written word says this. I know who you are. I know you want to help me. I know you want to deliver me. I'm confident that you will. But I'm asking you to speak to me specifically about this. And then he might highlight one or two or three verses to you that you found. And he'll say, these are the ones right here. These are the ones I'm speaking to you today. These are the ones you need to hold to. This is what you're going to stand on. He'll quicken it to you. And when he speaks to you like that, that's when faith comes. Because you've heard from him. And now you have God's word on it. You have him speaking to you, telling you, I will do this. And that is what you can trust him to do. Come on, can you say amen to this? Come on, will this take some effort on your part? Do you know why people like the idea of just beg God and have Him do something? Because that means we do little to nothing. Right? We don't have to hear from Him. We don't have to search His Word. We don't have to set time aside to listen for the leading of His Spirit. We can just ask and just He'll do it. But that's not how it works. That's not how it works. That's not how Jesus operated. That's not how we are to operate. Do I got anybody in the house that's going to actually go seek God about some stuff that you're facing? Do I have anybody in here that's going to do that? Come on, let me hear you if you're going to do that. I'm, I'm facing some challenges. I'm facing some tests. The Lord, through these services, has been revealing to me some things. This is what Amber was saying last week that I mentioned at the end. Go back to the beginning. See, before faith can happen, you have to get to this place. You have to be able to say, I know God said this to me. That's the place where faith begins. I know God said this to me about this. Now, when I know he said it to me, I can trust him to do it. And so this is what this means about going back to the beginning. Go back to the beginning and get it settled. What did God actually say to you about your situation? What did he say to you in his written word? What did he say to you by his spirit? Come on, if you're battling anxiety, I'm, I'll tell you what he said. He said he's given you his peace. He said he would help you. He said he would deliver you. But you've got to get it settled for yourself that this is what God said to me. This is what he said he would do. He said he would protect me. He said he would heal me. He said he would bless me. He said he would help me. Help me. I can trust him to do it in this situation. Come on, anybody going to do this? I'm going to release faith because when you go do this, I want to release faith over you and, and as you do this, that you would hear from the Lord so clearly, that it would be so clear to you what God is saying to you. Come on, that faith would come. Faith would come. Some of you are believing for your children, uh, kids that, that may be young, maybe old. You know, maybe they're running from the Lord a little bit. Maybe they're just not interested in the Lord. What's the Lord saying to you today? Start over. What did I say to you about your kids? What have I promised you? What did I tell you I would do? Some of you are believing for healing in your body. You know, maybe you've tried to build your faith off of what others have done or what other verses that other people have used. What did God say to you? What did he speak to your heart? 
That's what you can trust him to do. That's what you can, where you, that's the point where you can release your faith. Come on, I'm going to pray. Are you going to agree as I pray? Yes. Father, I thank you that as we go before you to seek you about these things that we're facing in our lives, Lord, faith comes by hearing. We want the real stuff when it comes to faith. We don't want to have something that's not built on your word. We don't want to have faith that's not built on something you said. Our hearts are hungry to hear from you. Come on, say it, Lord. My, say this with me. Father, my heart hungers to hear from you about these things that I'm facing. I'm asking you to speak to me. Speak a word to me. Show me what you're saying about what I'm facing. What can I have confidence in you to do? Lord, help me to see it. Help me to hear it. When you do, I will believe. Faith will come. I will get in faith. When I hear, I'll stay in faith. And I'll see my victory. Come on, can you say amen to that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe some people are going to go to God and get some answers. Things that you've been tripping up on, or particularly if you've been believing for something that's not changing, just go all the way back to the beginning. Start, Lord, ask the question, Lord, what did you actually say to me about this? The reason I'm so excited about preaching this to you is because this works. This gets rid of all the, well, I prayed and it didn't happen. I stood and it didn't come to pass. I, I believed it. This get rid, gets rid of all that because you start with, God said this to me. Faith is supposed to work, isn't it? Yes. Come on, when we speak to the mountain, shouldn't we see it be moved? Yes. Come on, when we pray and lay hands on somebody, shouldn't we see them recover? Yes. When we believe or receive, when we pray, shouldn't we see the desire? We're supposed to see this work. Real faith will work. But it's got to be built on something God said to me. And when it does, if you will get in faith and stay in faith, it's going to work for you. Can you say amen to this?